Hi, welcome to the vlog. This is a very exciting vlog for me. I'm doing two very different and new things. One, I'm gonna go to the Ned, that'll be the first portion of the vlog, and then I'll kind of like review the hotel a little bit as well afterwards to see if I recommend it to you. And then number two is my first ever Farfetch haul. I will put my Farfetch code up for you here. It's really exciting, so if you wanna go straight to the Farfetch part of the vlog, that's absolutely fine. You can go along to later, or if you wanna watch the whole vlog, here we go. Hello, you might notice I'm in a bit of a new location. We have just checked into the Ned in Bank in central London and I'm going to give you a bit of a room tour first. I've actually never stayed here before so everything is new. I've obviously come here to like go to dinner or go for a night out. We are here over the Jubilee weekend. I feel like I'm gonna hold off on giving like a really honest review yet until we have left. So, so far we've just checked in, seen the room, done like a little tour of like the gym and the pool and the spa area. I thought I would show you around the room now first too. So this is the hallway. And then we arrived at our room a few minutes ago like this. This is the entrance to our room. So you walk into this room, it's kind of like the entrance hall and then a mini bar here. There's tea and coffee, some spirit up here. And then when you open the fridge, more alcohol or the Ned brand. I'm actually really looking forward to a drink later. My favorite drink to get here later will either be a, I think it's a champagne martini with a twist or lychee martini if they do it, but lychee martinis are very hard to find. This is my outfit of the day. You may have noticed that I've got my hair slightly lighter um, and I got it cut a couple of weeks ago, but then we went back and I was like, can we actually go a bit lighter? So I'm blonde up for the summer now, still getting used to it. Got my naked white t-shirt on. These jeans are from M&S, free people boots. And then some gold jewelry, mainly from Missima. And then if you come through here, this is the bathroom, which I actually quite like. I really like this marble walk-in shower. I think it's very opulent and they've got like lots of gold touches with cow shed toiletries, of course. There's also a loofah pad here. Plus we get the Ned robes and lots of mini toiletries here, like a razor, shower cap, dental kit, very similar to Soho Farmhouse. And then we have a very opulent sink area really like the kind of gray and white marble with the gold touches i guess i'll be doing my makeup here later for dinner we actually have a dinner reservation later at chaconi's which is the italian restaurant downstairs which i love i really like chaconi's mayfair as well really great for people watching but we haven't been there together i'd really like to take my partner there i think he'd like it but yeah chaconi's at the ned tonight we also as we're staying at the hotel have access to the vault bar which I haven't been in since before COVID. I used to go there with my girlfriends a lot. One of my girlfriends who I lived with had a Ned membership, so we would come here often for some crazy nights. And um, yeah, I haven't been in there for years, so that would be really interesting. But this is the bathroom. And coming through to the bedroom, we have a couple of chairs at the end of the bed, and then this big, I think it's a king, bed now if you've watched some of my other vlogs we actually have a super king at home just because both of us are super large and my partner doesn't like these at the end because he's too long for them so there's a bit of negative um feedback there but the style is very kind of like old money i suppose very opulent very decadent and slightly maximalist i would say and then the four poster bed is like this with a uh, cloth at the top <laughs> I don't think it's a cloth. And then over here we have a bath in the bedroom with more um, cow shed toiletries as well and some rolled up flannels and then extra towels down here and then a very large bath in the middle of the room with a mirror and some more towels. Slightly some negative criticism I suppose is that we have a television in the middle of the room. I personally don't watch telly ever. I would choose not to have a telly. I just think it ruins the aesthetic of the room a little bit as well. And then also out here should be a view of the Bank of England, but the glass is frosted. This room just feels like quite dingy. And I suppose if there's a good view, it'd be nice to see it. And then over here we have the wardrobe area, which has some hangers inside and some bits that are handy, like a hairdryer, flat iron, lint roller, and then a is it safety deposit box? Is that what you call it? With a Ned bag and some more hangers in here. And this is what 
the bedroom looks like from the view of the window. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if it's your kind of style. It's a bit different for us. And yeah, there's a few things that are not great so far, but I am reserving judgment, as I said, until the end. I'll be able to give like a proper review when we're actually back. I'm also not sure on the filming and photography, videography rules and stuff. So I will try and get some clarity on that to be able to show you as much as possible. But let me know what you think so far. Um, it's definitely a very different aesthetic that we haven't gone for before, but it being the Jubilee weekend and we have stayed at other Soho houses, so we're just keen to try the Ned. Um, I also get a discount being a Soho house member, so that helps the price a little bit, although this is probably the most expensive room that we've stayed in at any of the houses. And also just show you some bedside deets. There's a very old phone you can call down to reception and have room service. And there's a little notebook. I think our plan is to do dinner at Chaconi's tonight and then have a post dinner drink in the bar and then have room service tomorrow in bed. I think that'd be really nice. The time is four o'clock now. We've got dinner at 6.45 I think. Hopefully they're quite busy tonight because we did go downstairs and when we checked in there wasn't really much of a vibe which hopefully there will be later and I think there's a live band too and we'll just have some nice Italian food. Since this is like a weekend away I'll be breaking my veganism and having some dairy which I'm really looking forward to. Probably something cheesy and maybe something chocolatey for dessert and I will check in next soon. We now have chairs. We haven't had chairs since we moved in. I think end of October, it's now June. Slightly sweaty, slightly sweaty. We've got four of these chairs now, which is really exciting. Yeah, we haven't had chairs since we moved in, in October. They're from Tika Moon. They took forever. So they kind of had to work, like the pressure was high. I'm thinking that they're like a little bit high. I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine. They have to be fine. I'm not gonna unbox over three right now because I'm can feel myself getting a bit sweaty. And today I've got some work to do, hence the hair and makeup. But first I thought I would run you through our time at the Ned. Let's get straight to it. I'd give it a six out of 10. Reason being value for money, value for price. Return on investment was low. It was a really expensive night. We also had three meals when we were there. We had a dinner, a breakfast in bed and then a lunch when we checked out. We're not like heavy drinkers at all, so there wasn't that much alcohol, but it was still expensive. I think the final bill was just shy of about 800 pounds and we weren't even there for 24 hours. We also weren't allowed access to the roof. And then when we tried to check in, they like weren't ready for us, only by five minutes. But you know, I'm like a stickler for time. And I just think checking in at 3 p.m. and then checking out the next day. I know that's standard for all hotels, but like you don't even get 24 hours in a lot of hotels. So that was like a minus point when we checked in and just because of my obsession with time. And then when we were actually in there, the dinner was great. And by the way, we had a really good time. I'm just being very mega picky because I think there's like a lot of prestige around the Ned and they charge such high prices. And I think you could probably go somewhere and have just as good as an experience, but for a lower price and they would offer you more. So like when we checked in, they're like, oh, you don't have access to the roof. You're not allowed to use like the pool up there. They have like one or two bars as well and a really lovely restaurant, it's members only. Kind of get it because it's members only, but when you're spending like 700 pounds there for the night, you don't really want to turn up to check in and have a load of places that you can't go. They also had two of their restaurants which were shut because of the bank holiday weekend, like the Jubilee weekend, which A, I think they should have told us before we made the reservation. B, it's just not great to like rock up to check in and be like, this, 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 you can't do. Also, bank holiday weekend, I feel like some people and companies get confused, but like the weekend is normal. It's like the Thursday and Friday that are the bank holiday bits. Like they're the bits you take off work. The weekend is just the weekend. So it was just a Saturday night and there were two restaurants we couldn't go in. Um, the room was like a little bit dingy, I would say. I'm gonna put my reel up here so you can see like snippets because I was aware that I just showed the room tour. Yeah, the room, what well, you actually saw, they had like a really small window considering the size of the bedroom, which didn't let much light in. Frosted glass, a netted curtain over it, and then curtains either side. It was just, it felt a little bit dingy when we were in the bedroom. And I don't know, we've just, we've been places that are more affordable that we felt 
or better. So I'm glad we did it, but we just weren't blown away. We're not gonna do it again. The spa was good. They have like a sauna and a steam room there, both of which are quite small. A massive hammam room. Obviously I know nothing about architecture or planning or anything, but I'm surprised they weren't kind of like switched around. We were only two people in there. It's just like heated kind of stones that you lie on, I think. And they had an indoor pool, again, like quite small. Foods fairly expensive. I actually had dairy, like I said I would. And I'm like slowly breaking out now. My skin around my mouth is like not so good. So I'm trying to steer clear of dairy. Well, I have. I've been like totally vegan since I come back and I'm just getting out of my system now. Oh, and one thing, which I'd never had before, my partner says this is normal, is that we checked in and then they took like an extra few hundred pounds for in case we bought stuff. And again, it's not like something that's said before we booked, but you don't really want to rock up and they're like, oh, we're going to take, I think it was like 250, 300 pounds extra on top of the room for if and when you like purchase things like meals or whatever, which of course we would have literally eaten into whilst we were there anyway. But to like charge you for something that you haven't used yet, I think a little bit weird on top of the room rate. Yeah, so wouldn't go back. Would I recommend? I don't know. It depends kind of like if it's on your list. And for us it was, we're very much like ticking it off. But I wouldn't save a really, really special occasion there and go with really high expectations. It was just fine, but it was fine at a very high price, which I think is a little bit disappointing. Anyway, that's my unanticipated six minute review of the Ned, just wanted to be honest. Today is, I mean, from bougie to bougie, we go from the Ned to a far fetch haul, I guess. You know, I actually really fancied doing this on the floor today. So that's where we're gonna be. This is my first ever time ordering with Farfetch. This is also sponsored by Farfetch and I will leave my Farfetch code up for you here and at the end. First time ever shopping with them. Really difficult to make a decision on what I wanted to buy. I'm a bit of a completionist, so I actually went through their brands page first and made a list of all the brands that I already have or that I wanted to try out for the first time. Some new ones in here, some favorites that I know work really well too. So I'm really excited to go through them. They are like, I, I opened them today just to check that everything was there for this haul, but I haven't actually like opened things properly. I just checked that the product was there. Everything is here. It came really quickly. It was very easy to order online with Farfetch. So far, a flawless shopping experience. I am so excited to take you through what I have today. Um, this feels almost a little bit Christmassy and I think I remember what I bought. So let's start unboxing. Everything will be linked down below, by the way, including my code and a link to all of the products and then a link to Farfetch as well. I'm gonna start with the smallest package first. I can already see what it is. This is a repurchase because I love the original. So I got the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, Party All Night, Stay All Day. This is the best setting spray I have ever used. It's very rare that I reach the bottom of products because I get so much product sent as PR. So when I reached the bottom of this, I was actually gutted. I've been thinking about it ever since. So when I had the opportunity to do my Farfetch order, I saw that they do Charlotte Tilbury. They actually have a whole beauty section and they do loads of beauty brands on there. Ones that are often hard to find as well. This spray is so good. In fact, I put on a bit now. I've missed this. Missed. See what I did there? So good. No point in spending so much time and money on skincare and makeup if your makeup doesn't actually stay, in my opinion. So this, like everything else, will be linked below. In between unboxing each item, I'm just taking a break in front of the fan. It's not even that hot in London. I think I think it's like 23 in the flat today, which is warm enough for me to break a sweat. So I'm just having a little break in between each product. Okay, next smallest one is this. I did open it, but I haven't actually opened it. And there's a bit of a story behind this one too. This is the, correct my um, accent if it's wrong, Augustinus, I thought it was Augustinus Bader, but I heard recently Augustinus Bader. The Rich Cream. It's a moisturizer for, I, I, I think it's for the for night. They have like a cream that's just for the day. The Rich Cream. I have never had skin like it until I used this product. It is not cheap. It's expensive, but obviously I have my discount code. Again, I'll flash that up here for you. But it is so good. If you just wanna like strip your skincare back and just get like a really lovely cleanser and a really lovely moisturizer, I don't think I could recommend a product more. And the story behind it is that I was actually going to be, I think one of the models when they launched it. I know it sounds ridiculous to me too, 
spoiler alert, I didn't get the job. I was able to trial the product for six weeks and I basically had bottles on tap and I fell in love with it. There was something that stuck in my mind about this one. And obviously it's so nice to have a clean face before you go to bed. So luxurious and indulgent. And if you really want to treat yourself, then this is the one. Don't hold any kind of grudge. I didn't get the campaign. I'm sure it went to somebody more deserving. So good. The bottle is like iconic. It's really interesting. It's almost like a feels like fabric but it's so posh it's so lovely <gasps> i own one of these now it's a glass bottle it feels as expensive as it is such a treat i'm gonna use that very sparingly every single night Whew. you know it's just occurred to me i might be drinking the water and having a fan on because of this a fever injection that i had did I tell you about that? I don't think I did. If I did, sorry I'm repeating myself, if I didn't, I had the hay fever injection a week ago. I've had no side effects. There's loads of side effects. You have to get it privately now. They don't do it on the NHS anymore. Me and my partner went, both got it a week ago. And he's had some side effects, but I'm suddenly burning up today and I've actually had a headache for the past 24 hours. It must be that, because it's not that hot, like it's completely overcast. Anyway, <sighs> Okay, next, the medium sized package if you have followed me regularly you'll know that i'm in search of the most perfect tanning routine and to be specific part of the process that i'm most looking forward to cracking because i will crack it is removing fake tan i saw that these face halos it's a product to help exfoliate and polish your body it's very sustainable because you can like wash and reuse it but yeah 200 wash cycles you can get out of this apparently it's just amazing at getting rid of makeup up. it's like the modern makeup remover but they have this body version it says it's non-toxic reusable and recyclable love the packaging really like that yes yeah, there's non-toxic reusable recyclable exfoliate and polish face halo for the body i've heard amazing things on the back it almost feels like a fleece so i don't know how that's gonna work oh your hand slots in here okay and then this part here is a texture i can't say i felt before it's not as rough as my exfoliating glove it's got like a roughness to it so i'll have to report back on this i'm just gonna put on my like tan remover sit for 30 minutes and then get in the shower and then try and like wash everything off if this is good i will be really happy i've got high hopes we also have two is it aesop or aesop products i got number one i don't currently have a body oil on the go and i have never tried this one before this is called breathless it's glass it's made with blood orange jojoba seed and laurel leaf which i've never heard of an elegant hydrating botanical oil to take your breath away massage one teaspoon of this nourishing treatment into clean warm skin from neck to toe i will be astounded if one teaspoon does my whole body I've never tried this product before i've actually never tried aesop Smells really lovely. Very fresh herbal. I love a body oil. We had run out of hand soap. This is actually made of plastic. I was rather hoping it would be made of glass. Um, Aesop Reverence Aromatic Hand Wash. I thought it would suit our kind of industrial warehouse aesthetic quite well. See, it suits. I'm excited to try that and it seems to be very popular. I feel like they're grounded in more kind of natural approach to products. So see what that's like the next one really exciting this secret little black sack i was like what on earth is this so i already have a hunza g swimsuit pros really comfy like so comfortable the most comfortable swimsuit i own cons quite spenny not great for curves from like a supportive point of view it doesn't make my body look kind of doesn't give it much structure like it doesn't really hold it in place but it's so comfy and it's so cool and i love their design really love the color and because i have look it's like a a kind of a pale like a pastel mint green really beautiful with these tortoise shell rings it's just so soft so they only come in one size doesn't always fit my uk 18 body but they're incredibly stretchy so comfortable i feel like loads of other brands try and do the same kind of crinkle design but whatever hansa g uses for their fabric is just so comfortable after your swimsuits get wet sometimes they're not that comfy they can go a bit like itchy on your skin whilst you're drying but this i wore in the moldies and i just loved it so i'm trying a slightly different design and i've got my girls trip with mykonos coming up and i could see me wearing this under like a white linen shirt like this so again i will put my discount code here for you loads of beautiful hunza g if you haven't seen them before definitely check them out they are such a nice brand and i feel like all of the influencers wear them so 
Sign me up. I've got the last package here, which is really exciting. It's totally wrapped up. It came like four days ago. So it's been sitting next to my desk and I haven't been allowed to open it because I just wanted to get like first reactions and unbox it properly and stuff. So I've been very well behaved. Oh, and here, it is obviously Farfetch is known for designer, very high end luxury brands. I decided to go for this. I've never bought anything like this before. I don't own anything like this. And I thought it would fill a really good hole in my wardrobe and I'd get a lot of use out of it. It's a coach bag. I don't even know where to begin. Just a bag, more padding. I'm really not a bag person, but I love this. I'm also not like a brown leather tan person either, so I'm kind of surprised that this caught my eye. Okay, here it is. What do you think? I love it. And it, again, it's really not what I would usually gravitate towards, but it caught my eye. I've still left the Farfetch label on. I'll remove that in a second. And I've kept some of the padding in just so it keeps its shape. The reason why I love this is because, mainly because it's like, summer now is what june i felt like i needed something that was kind of like slightly more casual bag and a lot of the bags that i have basically all of them have some element of black on them if not completely black so they're not very summery i saw this and i thought this is casual i've never owned anything from coach before either i know it's kind of like cool and ill at the moment so i thought i'd give it a go so there's one strap here and then there's like an over the shoulder strap here so i guess this is You'd hold it with your hand or you could have it over like that. So I like the fact there are options. I love this kind of shape. I, I want to say it's like a, it's not a bucket bag, but it's like a slouchy. And it's not a tote either. It's kind of like a mixture of the two. Obviously the exact bag would be linked down below. I feel like you could store a lot in this, but not so much that you'd pack loads too much in and then be carrying loads of weight around. Loads of really lovely details. These, I'm going to say clasps for how the handle's actually attached to the bag. And then this lovely, I don't know any of the terminology for this, I guess like a lock that you switch here for this to slide open. And then it has like a button at the back here where it clips. For security, you have this zip middle pocket here. And it just looks like a perfect size. Like I could feel like I could fit my Kindle in here, a book, sunglasses. A lot of my bags at the moment are a lot smaller than this. I just like to carry around as little as possible. But my first impressions are, I really, really like this. Let me know what you think. I think this is cool. This is actually very affordable. Off the top of my head, I think it was 330. But the size, the shape, I love how it's not like too trendy. I know I was saying coach is kind of in, but I can see this color and style as being really classic and something that I can actually like take through my life with me. I can see myself going to more casual meetings with this kind of bag, but also using it at the weekends. I really like it. And I think it will suit my style a lot as well. Slightly more casual and not ultra feminine either. It's not like really girly. It's just practical too. Really like it. And just something a bit different for me. Nice. Really happy with that. <laughs> it's like made my day. I'm actually going to my partner's brother's birthday dinner tonight so i think i'll wear that bag and do like a little outfit around it so that was my car virtual let me know if you think i did a good job off the top of my head my code is 10 molly but the correct code will be here on the screen let me know if you have tried any of these products if you have anything else to recommend from farfetch any brands yeah they've got a really good selection on there and everything like the packaging the delivery checkout was completely flawless so very impressed with my first ever farfetch haul i hope you enjoyed it and i'm going to end the vlog here i hope you liked watching this vlog something a little bit different let me know if you shop at farfetch slash if you end up staying at the ned and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.